in New York, Asher. Hi, Jim. I'd, I'd like to know your opinion on Piedmont Lithium, PLL. Uh, the stock popped to nosebleed levels a few days ago on the heels of a contract with Tesla to supply right. lithium carbonate. Uh, it's uh, since retrenched about 50%, with the EV market expected to produce about 30-plus uh, million cars within six years. Is this, position, is this company positioned well? Right. This is a great long-term spec, okay? So if I say that and someone, somebody who is seven goes into Robinhood and buys a lot of calls on it, that person's going to lose money. And what's going to happen is a six-year-old is going to clean up instead of you seven-year-old. And that's my view on that stock. Very dangerous, but if you want to speculate, I got no problem. Good morning, Rodney. It's uh, Monday morning, and uh, lithium stocks are on a tear. Uh, the news flow from... Battery Day continues to, to benefit uh, Lithium America's Piedmont Live End. Rodney, you weren't on the last video. I, we promised a, a part two of the Tesla's Piedmont Lithium uh, with uh, a week under your uh, under our belt here, you know, post that news. Uh, what are you sharing? I mean, you're publishing our, our proprietary a monthly research note. Why don't you give some highlights? First thing, uh, regionalized supply chains, that seems to be a particular focus and something that Tesla is focusing on. I think Europe is further down the, you know, down the, uh, down the track from a government perspective and from a holistic carrot and stick incentives and penalties. I mean, the overriding message that keeps coming through, and it's something I wrote about in March, is the battery technology is ahead of production capacity and raw material supply. So Tesla's making moves that you saw how much casting they're looking to do, you know, fixed casting to shorten the um, production side of things. But raw materials, that's going to be uh, more tricky to scale. What are we, uh, we looking out for? Well, you know, nickel wasn't a huge, you know, nickel from EV demand wasn't a huge percentage last year, but that's going to change. Certainly with what Tesla's looking at, and we agree, and, uh, and lithium. And that's probably why you're seeing the run today, because if you look at the numbers that Tesla's already throwing out in 2022, 100 gigawatt hours of in-house production plus external production means they alone could have more than 100,000 tons of hydroxide demand in 2022. And we, pre-battery day, we're at 175 for 2022 globally for all applications, for all companies. So um, it's, it's going to be impossible to get any in-house production by then. So where is the supply going to come from? Well, there's only a handful that it can. Um, and even after that, it's going to be tricky to scale. So that's probably the... Uh, the second, uh, the second major thematic that uh, we're looking at at the moment. Do you think Volkswagen or other uh, companies with huge uh, demand, uh, you know, capacity uh, expansions are, are going to have to follow Tesla in securing lithium and possibly nickel supply? And from where? Looking at the cost of a battery pack and a cell, I, I don't see how it's possible to get to the 60 to 80 dollar kilowatt hour range in time without controlling your raw material costs. The energy density debate as to who's going to get where, solid state, lithium ion, and so on, that's a separate debate. The, the cost of the kilowatt hour, you know, as I say, you're going to need to control, uh, into, you know, you're going to need to control those two variables. So in my opinion, you know, VW and others have made the first step to backward integration, which is to invest into cell manufacturers. But like Daimler buying 3% of Pharisis or other guys buying small percentages, that might help you a little bit in terms of uh, securing supply and also plants going up in Europe. But that's not going to control your raw material costs and that's not going to control your cell costs. So what's the next logical move? The next logical move is for, you know, VW, which is signed term deals. But, you know, again, that's just really securing supply from people like Ganfin. When are they going to actually look to lower their effective input costs? I think for someone like VW who has set their course and is planning on spending tens of billions of euros in the next few years on EVs, a, a move upstream 
beyond cathode, possibly into the mining side, I think is, is almost inevitable. I mean, in Europe, you have uh, VW invested in Northvolt. Uh, the European Investment Bank has invested in battery companies, uh, cathode companies, BASF, I think, and, and LG Chem, but not yet into mining or processing. They're, clearly, Tesla has made a, a, put a, a, a foot in the ground into the hard rock camp with their partnership with Piedmont Lithium. They kind of talked about clay, which is, I think, as we discussed, on a distant horizon. Uh, but for Europe and locally sourced, do you think that that will have to happen? Or, you know, hydroxide capacity in Europe directly? Um, and what will be the feedstock? Will it be clay? Will it be, you know, geothermal? Will it be hard rock? Or will it be as uh, live ends? Paul Graves always argues, you know, just traditional solars that they'll convert. So if you're going to regionalize the production, generally speaking, you need to be able to convert either spodumene or carbonate into hydroxide outside China. Today, it's hard to imagine me doing that with spodumene in most of the world. So largely the carbonate to hydroxide route lends itself to more um, efficient localization of that hydroxide step. I think that it's... Um... Uh, the quickest way to scale is through hard rock, without a doubt, I think, and also reprocessing is a possible other avenue. Uh, shipping in, you know, a non-battery grade material and reprocessing it in Europe with a small footprint, but less waste, is also appealing. My sense is, you know, Volkswagen and BMW have always stated their preference to hard rock. Other, you know, cleaner alternatives, if you will, in inverted commas, um, will take time. So I think my money would be on hard rock first, for sure, in Europe. I think one, one interesting thing that's just come up, you know, that I saw this morning is the UK numbers, the sale of um, EVs, um, coming in at over 10% for September, and they're on track if they continue the sales as they are. And, and RD, at the ID3, the VW was released you know, this month and, and we'll probably have a good build up. You know, the UK is heading for 200,000, uh, you know, electric vehicles in 2020, which makes it somewhere around, you know, eight to possibly 9% of the global markets, whether or not they pursue now a, a local battery plant and uh, possibly, you know, further upstream from that. So um, Europe has to be taken seriously. They, Europe is definitely heading for over a million EVs this year and, and you know, right in, in front and center. So I think people would ignore this market at their peril. There's a lot of will. I think the US uh, will also be up and coming with all the new models that are due to be released. So the rest of the world, I think, is going to overtake China this year. And I think given China's subsidies ending and so on, unless they do some kind of a re-engineering with how they, you know, support and promote EVs, I think they are going to become less the story in the rest of the world, you know, Europe and the US and possibly others down the line more so. Thanks for joining us for Rockstock Channel's third video. As a reminder, we are advisors to Piedmont Lithium and a shareholder in the company and nothing that you are hearing is financial advice.